So you get yourself a pile of charging cables for your phone, your iPad, whatever it is. And some of them seem to work better than others. Some seem to charge faster than others. And sometimes your device can't tell you if it's charging fast or not. Some devices do, some devices don't. How do you know which one of these are working good and which ones aren't? Which ones need to be tossed in the trash? Well, I'm going to give you a couple easy ways to figure that out. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be looking at these charging cables and seeing how to test them to see if they're working properly or not. And I've got a, uh, a variety of cables here from Amazon. we got some from Amazon. we got some sexy looking ones from Timu that are supposed to be awesome. And then uh, this white one here should be recognizable. It's just your standard Apple cable that comes with your device usually. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways to see if these things are working properly. Now, some devices like some of the Samsung phones and stuff, when you plug the cable in, it just says right on there, fast charging, or this, this device is charging slower than it should. And some devices don't give you that information right on the screen. So we're gonna use some things outside of the device to figure out if the cables are charging as fast as they should be or not. So to test this all out, I'm gonna use a couple things besides my cables here. I've got an iPhone, uh, 12 that's a 12 pro max or whatever it is and I've got it a little under half charge there I've got it pretty pretty low on the charge and I'm doing that because I want to make sure that the phone is Calling out for as much power as it can now these phones are smart enough to know how much power to ask for and as they get up towards the top of their charge then they start asking for less to kind of trickle it in and there's all kinds of stuff built into iOS that you know if you're charging it overnight it knows to uh, kind of pace itself a little bit. So I'm not using any of that. I just said, hey, I want this thing to ask for as much power as it can. Now, how am I going to know through these cables how much it's actually getting? Well, I've got two different ways. The first is going to be a charger like this. And I've, I've demonstrated these on the channel before. This is something you pick off of Amazon for fairly cheap, and if you have a lot of devices in your office or maybe you know in the family room, if you've got a lot of devices out in the family room that need to be charged while you're sitting on the couch, this is an awesome way to do it. It gives you all kinds of ports and options on uh, you know USB-C versus quick charge versus just the regular 5 volts. And we're going to do everything with the 5 volt ports just to keep everything kind of even. But you can see on the screen here, what voltage it's putting out and how many amps it's putting out. Now with those two values there, you can figure out how many watts the phone is getting through that cable because the amount of power or watts is simply just your volts times your amps. Now if you want to spend about a half an hour learning everything you need to know about volts and watts and amps and stuff, I'll link a video right up here that I did uh, last year and uh, you can geek out on that during your lunch break or something. But today just know if we have the same amount of volts going through every cable, then the amount of amps as it changes will tell us whether one cable is charging more or less than the other. So that's the first way I'm gonna do that, is just simply plug the cables in, plug them into the device, and then just see how much the device is getting through that cable. Now we're gonna do this first with uh, four different lightning cables going right into the iPhone. I also have some USB-C cables that I'll be plugging into an iPad Pro or an iPad Mini one of the two uh, that use USB-C, and we'll uh, get to test a couple USB-C cables also and see that it's basically the same exact method. So let's go ahead and plug in some cables. I'll show you what I've got um, in my variety of cables here, and we'll look at some numbers. All right, so let's look at the cables that we got hooked up here. I've got a red braided cable. This is just your standard uh, Amazon special. You get these in a pack of you know three or four or whatever for pretty cheap. And this is just a regular braided cable it's probably about four or five feet long. Next up, we've got this purple one, which has a right angle connector on the USB-A side and then a right angle connector on the lightning side. Um, very helpful if you're you know, using your iPad as a, a book, you know, sitting on the couch or sitting in bed, so you're not bending that cable over. This one's about 10 feet long. And I've got a kind of theory about the longer the cable is, if it's not high quality, it's not gonna be able to push that voltage over that same amount of distance and, and carry as many amps as it should. Uh, so we're gonna test that out to see how well this uh, right angle connector is doing and how long a 10 foot cable is doing. 
Next up, we've got this big beefy orange thing, and it's got, let me show you the other side of it. This is something I got off of Timu. It looked really cool. It's got three heads on it, USB-C, Lightning, and USB Micro, and they are stout, and these things glow when you plug it in. Um, another thing that, that is to be noted on this is cats really like this cable. Uh, my cat doesn't chew on any cables, but looking at this now, <laughs> you can see that she must have got it this one for some reason. So this thing, super cheap on Timu, as you know. Um, so we'll see how well that works. And then, last but not least, is your standard length uh, lightning cable right from Apple. So this is an Apple manufactured cable. So let's go ahead and plug these into the phone here and see how it works. So starting off with number one here, we've got just the red braided cable. Let's go ahead and plug that in. It shows that it's charging 26%. And let's look at the display here. And we got 5.2 volts going out. And it's jumping between 1.7 and 1.8. So about 1.7 1.8, which is in the 9 watt range. If you do that math, 9 to you know 9.2 or something. And I'm not sure why it jumps back and forth between the two, but it seems like that's uh, that's not too bad. So if you take your standard 5 volt cable and get 2 amps out of it, then that would be a, a simple math of 10 watts. So this is doing a little bit less than that. So not too bad. So let's go ahead and unplug that one and grab the purple one, which I said is really long. So let me get all the way to the end of it here. And here's that right angle connector on this one. It's about 10 feet long. Let's see how this one does. So it is charging and we are getting 5.2 volts out and we're jumping between like 1.4 to 1.5. So that is, uh, that is less. So I'm not sure if it's the, uh, you know, the quality of the cable or just the length. Like I had guessed that the, the length would have a difference if it wasn't a really high quality cable. So this one will charge a little bit slower. All right, let's go up to uh, that fancy Timu one next. And this is the one that's got all three different heads on it. So we're gonna grab this little guy here for the lightning connector. Plug it in, it is charging. And this one is getting 1.15 amps. So a little over five watts. So not much more than five watts, five and a half watts. So why is that? Is it just a cheap cable? Or is the power being split between the three connectors here once it gets you know, to the split point? If you plugged in more than one thing at the same time, is it gonna be sharing you know, that to where it'll actually deliver one amp to both devices? We may have to test that out. But it's definitely less. So this thing, if, uh, if your kids or someone complained about the cable not charging fast enough or, you know, at, at one amp, if you're playing a game on your iPhone or iPad, it probably won't even keep up with it depending on the game. So someone may complain about that cable. So that's definitely not as good. So let's bring up the last one here, which is the iPhone cable. Let's plug it in. And this one is getting over two amps. So that, that's not surprising to me. I've owned iPhones uh, probably all the way back since the iPhone 3. I've had a ton of iPhones, a ton of iPads, and I can tell you every single time the white cable wins. If it's an Apple manufactured cable, it always wins. So we're getting over 10 amps of charge to our device. And of course, this is all gonna depend on what the device is, what the charging capabilities are, if it uses some of the different technologies like quick charge, if it uses uh, power delivery to where it can get 12 volts, like I know the iPad Pro will pull 12 volts from the, the right type of charger. I'm just looking at simply the 5 volts and seeing how that works. So again, pretty easy way to test out your cables. I've had cables that um, would, would plug in and would do nothing, and you can verify real quick that Absolutely, it is not pulling anything. I've seen cables that would say they're charging on the phone 
and would pull like a half an amp. So that's really bad. That's, you know, two watts, two and a half watts going to the device. That's never going to keep up with it. So it will charge it if you leave it in there overnight, but it's just not optimal. So one of these guys, uh, I'll put a link down in the description below of an updated version of this that has a little bit better power delivery on it. Um, this is one of my older ones, but let's go ahead and check out the second way to test out these same cables. All right, so next up, maybe you don't have one of these, and if you've got something like this, then you won't even need to buy one of these. But basically, I've done a lot of reviews on these uh, power banks or solar generators, whatever you want to call them, on the channel. I recently reviewed this EcoFlow. It's a very budget-friendly in intro model into these things, and it's great not just for you know portable power, but also to test out your cables. So on our screen here, we've got, of course, what the charge is of the device here, it's 43% charge, but we've got our input watts and our output watts. So we can just plug in some device and it'll tell us exactly how much power it's pulling from the batteries in here. And then based on that, it'll tell you how long it's got to uh, you know deliver that power before it, it runs out of battery. So I'm just gonna plug these cables in here and look at the output power. So let's start with that red cable again. This is just your regular Amazon four pack special cable. And it did all right, it did like nine watts based on simple math. So let's plug it in. And yeah, it's pulling about eight or seven watts, seven or eight watts on this cable. So that's pretty close to what it was reading on the desktop charger. So let's go ahead and pull up that next one, which was the purple one. And again, this purple one was the 10 foot long cable with the right angles on it. And it was pulling significantly less. And yep, it's pulling about six watts from the charger here. Next up is going to be the Timu Special, this big, beefy, indestructible, powers everything for like 42 cents shipped from China. And we'll plug that in. And this one was, I think, the worst one that we had. I'm not expecting to get any more than 5 watts. So let's plug that in. And sure enough, we got 5 watts being pulled by that cable and then last we've got our Apple cable this is the one that if everything is uh, correct should be pulling the same amount as it was before so about 10 watts or so maybe 10 to 11 watts and there we go it's climbing up so 11 watts so the iPhone cable wins again that's again not not a surprise Here's a little bonus tip for you. If you always get confused about plugging in this way versus this way, if the ports are set up right on your computer or on your laptop or on your charging device like this, just look at your cable here. Look for the side that has the seam. So right down the middle here you can see the seam where this metal is bent together. That seam always goes down. So if you remember that, You'll remember how to plug it in the, the right way every time. Now, I've had a lot of computers, uh, like HP computers, that have them upside down for some reason. I don't know if that's by design or not, but uh, that's just a, a little bonus tip. All right, so next up, I wanted to test uh, just a couple USB-C cables just to show that it works exactly the same. And for that, I've got a iPad mini here that is a USB-C device and I've got a little game running on it so that it's uh, you know definitely trying to uh, to pull some power so let me grab some cables and we'll test out a couple different USB-C cables alright so I got three cables we're gonna test out here we've got that orange Timu one just because it's got that same uh, connector on the end of it it's got a USB-C connector on it I've got this little cable here which came from a pair of wireless headphones and it's only about two feet long and it's pretty skinny. 
and sometimes uh, the manufacturers put in a really cheap charging cable. Um, this one isn't as skinny as some that I felt. This is actually uh, Soundcore. So Soundcore is actually made by Anchor. So I'm not too concerned about that. And then I've got a true Anchor cable here. And this one's probably three feet long, USB-C. If I don't have access to an Apple cable, I always use Anchor cables if I care about my products because they make some pretty darn good cables. So let's go ahead and plug in first. Let's start with this white one here, which like I said, is just a little freebie that came with some headphones. So we'll plug that in here. Plug this into my iPad. And it's drawn about seven watts. So not too bad. It's not quite the 10 watts that you would hope, but it's definitely better than five watts. So let's go ahead next to the full-blown anchor cable. And this is a, a nice braided cable. I love these things. I use them for just about everything. And this one's pulling about seven also. So it may just be the iPad itself is not needing full charge. I may look around and see if I've got an Apple USB-C cable to uh, give that a full test. And then the last one here, let's plug in this Timu orange cable. And this one again has got the three heads on it, so let's grab the USB-C. And it's glowing green, so it should work. And the iPad is seeing nothing. And we're seeing nothing on the screen. So this is not working at all. Even though the, the tip of it is gr glowing green, it's definitely not delivering the 5 volts to the device. So, don't know what's going on there. But like I said, I only paid a couple pennies for it. So, I'm not too concerned. Maybe I'll just give it back to the cat. So, let me see if I can find one more USB-C cable to test out this iPad. Alright, so I found a couple more uh, USB-C cables tested out with this iPad Mini. And got the same thing, about 7 watts. So maybe that's just all the iPad mini wants to pull over USB-A uh, or 5 volts. So I grabbed a anchor cable, which is USB-C to USB-C. I've got it plugged into the power delivery port here. And I remember the charge that came with this was a 20-watt USB-C adapter. So the little uh, Apple Cube was a 20-watt charger for it. So let's go ahead and see what we get when we plug in USB-C to USB-C cable into the iPad mini. And yep, definitely. So it's climbing up to 20 watts on there. So it'll charge this thing three times faster than if we plugged in a USB-A cable using just the 5 volts. So this is definitely probably doing like a 12 volts, 1.5 amps or so. So if you want to keep your USB-C devices like these iPad minis and pros charged up quickly, then make sure you get yourself a good charger. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Just wanted to post a helpful little video to help you guys figure out when your cables are charging uh, properly or not, which cables you need to throw away, and uh, you know figure out how much power your devices are able to pull. So whether you're using a little desktop charger like this where you can read the volts and amps, or you're using something like this that makes it easy and just shows you exactly how many watts, at least now you have an idea of what cables are doing what for you. I know that some Android devices have apps that you can load on there that show how many watts are being pulled. I've tested some of those apps before and they never match each other. So I don't know what makes them vary between the power that they say that they're getting and the power that, you know, each of my little devices are saying that they're they're pulling. But I always just kind of trust something like this that definitely knows exactly what is being drawn from the charger itself. So if you have any questions about this whole process, let me know down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer anything that I can. If you got something out of this video, you know I appreciate that big thumbs up. That helps out the channel, and it makes me feel good. But I thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.